New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman, blunt. The conduct really was shocking. Impassioned. The Trump administration is out to destroy this bipartisan tradition. Known to many as a longtime champion of progressive ideals, battling President Trump and protecting women's rights. We must reimagine a world where predators are exposed and held to account. But to the women now accusing him of physical and emotional abuse, the Democratic heavyweight is now nothing more than a hypocrite. These allegations were a complete shock, even to people who knew Schneiderman personally. New York's highest ranking law enforcement official dethroned, resigning last night just three hours after bombshell abuse allegations. In this damning report by Jane Mayer and Ronan Farrow in the New Yorker magazine, four women come forward accusing him of having subjected them to non-consensual physical violence. Michelle Manning Barish and Tanya Silverotnam speaking on the record, alleging he repeatedly hit them, often after drinking, frequently in bed, and never with their consent. They described the same language that he used, the same kinds of misogynistic and violent epithets, uh, the same kinds of sexual behavior, the same specific acts of violence, strangling, slapping ears very hard. In a statement, Schneiderman said, in the privacy of intimate relationships, I have engaged in role playing and other consensual sexual activity. I have not assaulted anyone. I have never engaged in non-consensual sex, which is a line I would not cross. He then added in another statement that he strongly contests the allegations. This is all a stunning fall from grace from a politician who many thought might one day run for governor. Eric Schneiderman was able to use his office as a hedge against the Trump administration. He was able to take on big corporations. He was even able to take on Harvey Weinstein. We have never seen anything as despicable as what we've seen here. A leading voice against the now disgraced Harvey Weinstein. Eric Schneiderman was a champion of the Me Too movement and when the New Yorker and the New York Times were heralded for some of their initial reporting that sparked the allegations against Harvey Weinstein, he tweeted this, the brave men and women who spoke up about the sexual harassment they endured at the hands of powerful men. Schneiderman said without that reporting, there would not be the critical national reckoning underway. He understood the Me Too movement and what it meant. It seems in his private life he just didn't live by it. Schneiderman now joins a growing list of powerful men taken down by accusers inspired by the very same movement he so publicly supported. Schneiderman's accusers are speaking partly because they feel that he was hypocritical. It was hard for them to watch him stand there and talk about how Harvey Weinstein deserves justice and know all the while that there were these skeletons in his closet. Michelle Manning Barish first met the divorce Schneiderman in 2013. She was a fellow progressive, a political activist, and after meeting through friends, they became involved. Their budding romance chronicled at the time by the New York Post, who dubbed her a ravishing redhead. But a few weeks later, Manning Barish says Schneiderman grew violent one night after drinking, saying all of a sudden he just slapped me open-handed and with great force across the face, landing the blow directly onto my ear. She continues, he then used his body weight to hold me down and he began to choke me. In every fiber, I felt I was being beaten by a man. This is not Fifty Shades of Grey. This is not in a gray area at all. What these women are alleging is assault, and they used that word over and over again. Horrified and upset, Manning Barish told friends about the alleged incident, but eventually went back to Schneiderman after she says he wooed her. Why stay in the relationship for so long? Sometimes it's low self-esteem. Sometimes they think this is what love looks like. Sometimes uh, they, they think that the person will change or that they can change the person. The sad part about it is it is not at all unusual. Schneiderman's relationship with Manning Barish continued on and off until 2016, according to The New Yorker. She alleges that he threatened to kill her if she ever left. On one occasion, she says that Schneiderman told her, I am the law. Is it quite often the more powerful men that are able to, if they desire, I guess, have this kind of emotional abuse that keep women coming back? Absolutely. I think the common misconception is that sexual assault and physical assault and crimes against women, that those crimes are about sex. They're never about sex they're about power so sometimes it's the most powerful men that you see behaving in this way Tanya Selvarotnam also says that Schneiderman abused her she's an author and film producer they met at the 2016 Democratic National Convention he was a powerful figure in Democratic politics 
Uh, many of the women said that he used the power of his office to threaten and intimidate them. Selvaratnam says that it was a fairy tale that became a nightmare. She says he would slap and choke her, often making sexual demands, calling her his brown slave. In her view, Schneiderman is a misogynist and a sexual sadist. Thank you. But to much of the public at the time, Schneiderman was a hero. Tonight, we're going inside the scandal that has rocked Hollywood. Hollywood mega mogul Harvey Weinstein has been fired. In October, while Schneiderman was still dating Selvaratnam, the Harvey Weinstein scandal was unfolding. And Schneiderman was right at the forefront. This is unacceptable. It was then, it is now, and it will be moving forward. Are you surprised that he was so outspoken if the allegations are true, that he was so outspoken on behalf of uh, victims of sexual assault. That is certainly very surprising. Um, on the one hand, we're talking about sort of the height of hypocrisy. It is the classic profile sometimes um, of, of an abuser. In private, the pair was still dating, but according to her, the abuse continued. The fact that some of Eric Schneiderman's accusers either stayed with him or had dealings with him after alleged attacks um, is not exculpatory for him in any way. It's actually very typical of domestic violence. These are stories that Schneiderman's ex-wife refutes, saying in a statement last night that these allegations are completely inconsistent with the man I know. She and Schneiderman have one adult daughter together. None of the women accusing Schneiderman of abuse went to the police. They say they were inspired to come forward after Rob Porter, a top aide in the White House, resigned amid allegations that he'd abused two ex-wives. Some thought they had no legal option, so they decided to go public. One of the women in the story said very clearly, what do you do when your abuser is the top legal authority in your state? That's a scary situation to be in. Selvarotnam was connected with another former girlfriend of Schneiderman who described similar abuse. That woman did not go on the record with The New Yorker. In a statement to ABC News, Selvarotnam said in part, after I found out that other women had been abused by Attorney General Schneiderman, I wondered who's next, so I chose to come forward. Manning Barish wrote on Twitter, after the most difficult month of my life, I spoke up for my daughter and for all women. I could not remain silent and encourage other women to be brave for me. I could not. No matter what people thought about Eric Schneiderman or his record on women's issues, once the allegations were published, there was no defense. These women should have their day in court. No one is above the law. No one should be afraid to come forward. Do you think that criminal charges are a real possibility here? I think certainly it's very possible. Uh, we know that the investigations have been opened up, at least uh, at the Manhattan DA's office. With the Me Too movement, uh, we are seeing women come forward, and I think we're going to see an uptick in the prosecution of these cases. Tonight, in a battle he so publicly fought before, Schneiderman now finds himself on the wrong side. Eric Schneiderman would be outraged by the allegations that he is now accused of. He would have had no patience for this. I hope that the bravery of these women who spoke out about Eric Schneiderman uh, prompts a conversation in the United States and beyond about domestic violence and these kinds of activities, which are so often shrouded in silence because violence against women knows no party. For Nightline, I'm Lindsay Davis in New York. Our thanks to ABC's Lindsay Davis. And one more note here, the governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo, has appointed a special prosecutor to investigate the former attorney general, Eric Schneiderman. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.